The following program contains language, images, and or subject matter that may be objectionable to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for The Media Zone! With your hosts, Ed and Dave! Tonight, a look at this week's new film and DVD releases. And the chance to win free movie tickets with the Poster Pairs game. And now your hosts, Ed and Dave! That's a good clap. Oh. That's a clap now, that's how I line up the cameras. And the, I sent out the video over to the producer. The, I need a big spike to line up all the cameras. And for some reason, the, on the last taping, I was not getting a spike from this sucker. Oh. Right there. Oh, no. And yet, somehow, I found one little blip when somebody laughed or something to line them up with. All right. It is June 20th, Dave. Is it? So yesterday, we celebrated June 19th. We did. That's a great day in the annals <laughs> of <laughs> Colony Central High School. That is when uh, we were offered the regent's exam, or not, for English, because he was the English teacher, right? Right. I That's always good. took the regent's exam. You actually. did? Regardless of whether I earned the academic exemption. <laughs> I was I, very studious. My uh, philosophy was any test I Don't have to take. didn't have to take, I didn't <laughs> take. I'm not sure what my SAT scores were. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those? Those were I apparently them, very yes. important. Yes. I, I don't know what I got. I got into college, sort of. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know if it was my SAT scores. It was not very important. <laughs> Guess not. To me. You, you didn't do well on them. I don't, uh, I don't know how I did. Who knows? Could we find that out? Could we contact the Board of Education, whoever <laughs> has those records? I like my 1980 uh, SAT records. I, I would like yours as well. Because <laughs> I don't want mine. I don't care. I also want my personal file they're always threatening us with <laughs> in high you, school. It'll cost you $10, Ed. <laughs> what are we doing tonight? Are well, we doing anything good? I don't Let's know. mention what we do on the show. We got into a whole thing last time right. about how you have to get your eyes examined at Price Chopper now to get your license. <laughs> you don't have to go there. I'm just saying it's a choice. We've got The Big Sick, The Beguiled, and Transformers The Last Night. That's K and I. Right. THT. Did I spell it right here? Yeah. Yes. Well, okay. I didn't want people to be confused. Like, last night. Was it last night? I'm not positive you're going to see this version oh, on the clip. Possibly. As long as it's not Alien Covenant, oh. we're okay. That reminds me. I, I, did you see any of the current summer films? Have you been out to see Kong. anything? Kong. That's all I saw. I saw Kong, What's which it? will be out on uh, DVD in July. Ooh. I did see Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh-huh. That was good, only slightly below the original because, you know, the freshness is off a little bit. Right. But that was good, and then I saw, what did I see next? I know Alien, I know there was something before Alien. What was out before Alien? What the hell should I know? <laughs> well, I did see Alien. Superhero film? Was it a superhero film? Oh, probably. Every film was a superhero film. Maybe I didn't. Maybe that's all I saw. Guardians Wonder Woman? and Wonder Woman. I will have seen by this show, which did get good reviews and ninety six on the yeah. tomato scale. Oh, okay. that's how you have to go by now to the tomato okay. scale. But Alien was a little bit of a disappointment. And I watched that Prometheus before I oh saw it. And I, I like that Prometheus, Dave. Really? I, well, I thought that was awful. But they promised a film with that at the end of Prometheus where the, the robot and the woman were going to go off and looking for these engineer characters they came up with. And in a matter of minutes, I'm going to spoil it for you. Go ahead. It was like that Alien 3. The woman is gone. and She's dead. We only have the robot, and he wipes out all those engineers <laughs> in a couple of minutes. It's a whole, it's a half-assed alien story with bad CGI. That's what we got. Oh. We didn't. We weren't asking for that. <laughs> it ain't no land shark. Uh, no, and very bad CGI. And I looked it up. It's the same company that did the Prometheus, which was pretty good. 
except Weta put the fin finishing touches on that Prometheus, and they were not involved in this film oh. because they were too busy working on the Planet of the Apes. Mm. Well, there's another Planet of the Apes coming out? <laughs> yes, you aren't aware of that. Are we going to see that uh, this time? Oh, we did that already. When is that? What? We didn't do the apes yet. No, they're coming out soon, Dave. No. God. Those were good, those. Did you see the two new apes? I movies? saw, the first yes. One. The, yeah, I saw both of them. You James Franco, both. and then was it uh, Gary Oldman? Yes. Yeah, I did see both of them. They were good. Yeah, they were good. I don't know how they do the apes so well in that. Which are a real creature, you know, it's not like a talking right. chair like or anything. It's a car that talks, <laughs> or that a car. seem to be freaked out over. <laughs> but how are the apes looking so good, and yet an alien creature looks so crappy in this alien movie? Oh, well, I don't know, it's because, what's his name, where's uh, the... <laughs> Weta. The, the, no, the guy. Oh, Ridley Scott? No, the guy who does the... Green dots. Yeah, I can't think of his name. <laughs> Andy Circus. Right. Yeah. He's such a fine ape actor. He was also an actor in that... <laughs> 30 going on 30 for some reason. Was he? I noticed them in there. He was in King Kong. Yeah. He can act with or without dots. Right. Oh. <laughs> some and, movies he's in, you don't actually see him. He gets top billing. Uh, right. Because he's just the dot guy. He is the... Whatever. All right, anyway. Guy to go to if you have dot filmmaking yes. in your budget. All right, let's move, let's move on to... Now, you might need to get that uh, accent you were doing earlier for this read. You're I will not, Ed. It's politically incorrect. <laughs> I did it within the confines of our personal conversation. You, you don't do that. Sometimes you do it on the air. It depends. Right? All right, maybe. It's a comedy, so I think it applies here. Well, it doesn't apply to Kathy Griffin or Bill Maher. <laughs> no. What happened to comedy, oh, Dave? I don't know. You, you can't, can't do anything. You can anymore. do nothing. Everyone is upset about everything. Anyway, it's Big Sick mm. starring, and I don't I'm sorry, I, I can't say his name, but it's Kumail Nanjani, Holly okay. Hunter, who's awful, as oh, an actor, and Ray Romano. Based on the real-life courtship between Kumail Nanjani and Emily Gordon, the big sick tells the story of Pakistan-born aspiring comedian Kumail, who connects with grad student Emily after one of his stand-up sets. However, what they thought would be just a one-night stand, a.k.a. They banged each other. <laughs> they blo it blossomed into the real thing, which complicates life that is expected of Kumail mm. and his traditional Muslim parents. Mm. Unless it's Kumail. When Emily is beset with a mystery illness, uh -oh, <laughs> it forces Kumail to navigate the medical crisis with her parents, Beth and Terry, who he's never met with her parents, All right, okay. while dealing with the emotional tug of war between his family and his heart. Rated R for language including some sexual references. This is a high premise that needed all that explaining, Dave. I guess. It's, yeah, mixed, mixed relationship and the troubles that ensue. But this is what happens when you have, uh, you know, parents who just, they just feel they have to be involved in the traditional, the continuation, Ed, of your traditional heritage. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's not what we do here. No, we don't do that here. We do it in Pakistan, I think, apparently. We do. Um, but here we allow you to uh, associate with free love, Ed. Right. Love anybody. Remember in the 60s, it was very shocking when Sidney Poitier was in mixed relationships. Oh. I think he did two movies like that. A Patch of Blue was one of them, I think. And then guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner. And this, in this day and age, when the Pakistani are mixing. And apparently oh. Ray Romano is the person who questions the Pakistani and asks about 9-11 oh. in this t film here. I never heard of this. It was apparently a up-and-coming comedian. Have you? Um, I've seen him. You I just don't him. know the name. Okay. Now I know the name. It's Kumail Nanjani or some similar type pronunciation. Okay, well we're going to see how this does. I never heard of him, but uh, he apparently was big enough to get a film Film with Ray Romano and Holly Hunter. Mm, was, getting a movie with Holly Hunter, <laughs> probably not as tough as it used to be. Holly Hunter was a bad uh, politician in that Man of Steel movie. Um, well, I don't know how you could be <laughs> a bad actress in a Superman movie, but she pulled it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Beguiled. Ooh, Beguiled, Ed. Sounds very serious. Nicole Kidman. 
Al Fanning, Kirsten Dunst, and <laughs> <laughs> Colin Farrell. I just like to say Kirsten Dunst. Yes, you do. You have to make sure you say Kirsten, not well, Kristen Dunst. Right. The Beguiled is an atmospheric thriller from acclaimed writer-director Sofia Kabbala. She's acclaimed? <laughs> I think she did a film with Kirsten Dunst before, The Virgin Suicides. I think that was her. The story unfolds during the Civil War at a Southern girls' boarding school. Mm. Its sheltered young woman, women take in an injured enemy soldier. As they provide refuge and tend to his wounds, the house is taken over with a sexual tension. Oh no. And dangerous rivalries. <laughs> and taboos oh. are broken in an unexpected turn of events. Oh. Rated R for some sexuality. Some sexuality? It's the whole premise of the movie. You're not going to see boobs when no. Sofia Coppola is directing. But will you see copulation when Coppola is directing? <laughs> you might see that. Now, do you know this is a remake, Dave? I, I am unaware of that. This is a remake of a film that starred Clint Eastwood in the early 70s. Oh, what was it called? The Beguiled. Oh, how about that? I don't think I've seen that whole thing. Oh, no, don't be stuck in the water with the sharks. But the girls do something to Clint Eastwood, or in this case, Colin Farrell. Yes, they did. They, they did something earlier in this in the show. Well, they don't just poison. Them. <laughs> oh no, they do other things. They do some other things. Look at that. Hmm. Looks like an interesting film. I don't know if it's a summer film. <laughs> it might be. It might have been a fall film, but who knows. Maybe you want to see something different than the superheroes. And well, I wouldn't see anything than <laughs> superhero movies. Oh, give it a try. Will you? Please give us one boob. One boob? Sophia Coppola. Well, there's two right here. <laughs> couple, we're a couple boobs here talking about the movies. Right. We, that's what we, that was our job title for 30 years. A right. couple of boobs. A couple of boobs. A couple of boobs talking about... <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we have one I'm more. Still, I'm still a boob man. <laughs> Transformers, The Last Night. Let's see if you spelled it right, Ed. Where is it? Beautiful. Ah. Stars Laura Haddock, Mark Wahlberg. Didn't, I thought Wahlberg destroyed this, this, this series, but apparently <laughs> they're allowing him back. Uh, Anthony Hopkins, and I don't know, what's oh, a, no. is it a Gemma or Gemma Chan? I think it's Gemma. Gemma? Optimus Prime finds his dead home planet, Cybertron, mm -hmm. in which he comes to find he was responsible for its destruction. Oh, that can't be pleasant. <laughs> he finds a way to bring Cybertron back to life, but in order to do so, Optimus Jeez. needs to find an artifact that is on Earth. Stamuli or Moly, whatever. <laughs> Rated PG-13 for violence and intense sequences of sci-fi action, language, and some, Ed, some innuendo. Ooh. I want to remind people, it's been a good 30 years or 20 years now. 91, 2000. It will be 26 years. 26 years. This is an Oscar-winning actor here. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins? <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. But these robots that are fighting. It's not even the regular Transformers. Now they're knights or something with swords and... And the big dinosaur one. What the hell is going on? Well, Where did we bet out of this? I know we saw the second one. We had I did, for did that. Did we see the second one? I believe so. Oh, yeah, I did see the second one. That's as far as I got with it. <laughs> That's as far as we got. There was one more with, uh, what's his name, but without the girl. Was it? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf was in the third one, but not Megan Fox because right. she said was, bad words. It was some blonde, British blonde chick. And I was trying to figure out why is the format, the aspect ratio, going from widescreen there to wide, bigger. Apparently this was shot with IMAX and canvas for some scenes. I don't know if your, your letterboxing is going to shift while you're watching the movie. It did during the trailer here. Oh, yeah. See, it's letterbox wider. I think the wider is the IMAX cameras there. Are we going to have to endure that? <laughs> shifting frames. <laughs> oh boy, Michael Bay's done them all. I guess the kids love it. Do they love the robots battling? 
I don't know. You know, I have that one, the last one with Mark Wahlberg. Uh huh. I thought it did poorly. I thought it killed it was going to kill the franchise. We but. thought so. It was it was cheap, one of those Walmart deals, and I bought it. It's still sitting there. I, I don't know if I'll ever watch it, but there I have it there. What is it, what is it with people that just buy things, and it just sits there? It was probably, are, you, are you hoping they'd sell it on eBay for like a million dollars? It was probably $5, you know, one of those uh, Black Friday deals. You know what I wish I had? Yeah, I know what you wish you I, had. I showed you that. <laughs> you wish you had it. I had the kids to have those, and I don't have them. The uh, Disney D, uh, VHS, VHS. Yeah, yeah. tapes, for some reason, for nostalgic value, <laughs> I think is what it is. <laughs> it's crappier quality. Why would you want it? I think the kids are remembering the fun of the big clam box opening. Yeah. And they're paying like two thousand dollars for this uh, diamond series for some reason. Well. And I probably should have kept those because they were did. <laughs> <laughs> but when the DVDs came out, I unloaded those all for barely anything. I think. I know there's got to be one <laughs> somewhere in the house. Don Ganser? Yeah, I think he did say he had some. Well, you know, I've got a bunch of old vinyl records. Are they worth anything? <laughs> they might be. Those are coming back. Well, can yeah. I sell them to someone? Because I don't want them. Uh -huh. I'm to make a few bucks. Sure. I'm going to fund my retirement. Who do I go? Uh -huh. Please, someone write to the show. I've got a lot of old vinyls, a lot of Alice Cooper, a lot of Elton John. Don't listen to them. Well, Alice, I do. I got the DVDs. But anyone wants them? Please. T Ten bucks each I'll take. I think you should look them up on eBay with the mm -hmm. sold listings and uh -huh. see if they're going for anything. Oh, all right. Let's see. We're done with the film. Is it time for DVD releases? Time for DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever. whatever. I like Blu-rays. I'm not falling into that 4K scam. Okay. Yeah. What, what, is, what is this? This is the Paul Neishi collection. Who's he? I believe he was a Spanish director. From the 70s, who did a lot of monster movies. One of them was the werewolf there. So he didn't write enough to actually get a photograph? <laughs> no, this is lovely new illustration here. That almost looks like the Oliver <laughs> Reed uh, werewolf. It does a little bit. I'd like to see. He did a whole series of werewolf films. I'd like to take a look at whatever the best one is considered. He looks like Brendan Fraser with a beard. Hmm. Ooh, The Lodger. That was uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, wasn't that the um, um, Jack the Ripper? Right. Oh, that was a good one. It was a silent film, and they, didn't, they had somebody upstairs, and they didn't know anything about him, and they thought he was Jack the Ripper. Oh, I don't good. remember if he really was or not, but I guess we'll find out if we buy the Blu-ray. Or you can just <laughs> look it up on the web. That you could do. You could also possibly check your local listings for... Uh, Turner Classic Movies. They always have Sunday night silent films. Yeah. Some of them look pretty good still. They've been remastered. Mm. There's <laughs> Prison Break. Wasn't that on like twice? This was the event series. Huh. I didn't watch Prison Break right. nor the event series. I did not either. Did they get everybody back for the event series? No. Does anybody know or care? Nobody down here. <laughs> Next. I don't. Hmm. What's next? Island of Terror. Do you remember this one, Dave, with Peter Cushing? I don't remember that. They were the little turtle-like creatures. I remember this was probably on Channel 10 a lot. And they were on a little Scottish island. And they were sucking people's bones oh. out through the little tendle there. Did they live? <laughs> no, they came a squishy oh. mess. I remember this was an interesting uh, film and kind of scary, Ooh. even though they were little fake turtle things. Oh, boy. <laughs> Did you ever see Car Wives? Um, George Carla was in that, It right? was quite entertaining. Richard Pryor. Was Franklin Ajay in that one? Franklin Ajay with the big afro. Was, who else? John Amos wasn't in it, wasn't it? Ivan Dixon. Ivan Dixon, that's right, from Hogan's Heroes. And the... It was Huggy Bear. I forget it was Huggy Bear or the other pimp. <laughs> but he played the transvestite character. Antonio right above. Fargus? Yeah, that's him. Which one was he on? Huggy Bear? Well, yes, he was Starsky and Hutch. Starsky yes. and, then there was the Beretta uh, rooster a pimp character. There was <laughs> I, don't, I never saw Beretta, so. 
Also, the Pointer Sisters stopped by the car wash and do a number oh, day. That's good. That's good. <laughs> this was pretty funny. Well, didn't it spawn a sequel? Did it? Oh, yeah, way, it did. way later on. Nothing like the original where George Carlin was looking for the black blonde babe for the whole film. Oh. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so get, I don't have any deaths. We were going to talk we'll about them. We'll have to talk about them because uh, if anybody knows why you can't boot up your computer, which I'll be doing for the entire afternoon probably, <laughs> looking at how, how to fix this, but I couldn't burn the deaths. Oh. We're damn lucky we got the trailers on. But who uh, who died? Uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore. That was the biggest one. Was it? Okay. What was he? 89, 88? 89. Oh, with yellow teeth. <laughs> <laughs> was that it? The kind of thing? That's what's kind of stuck out to me. But that oh. seems to be a British thing. Their huh. dental plan over there. It's just not that Is good. It a little better than the SEFQ? CSEA. <laughs> 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 I don't know. My teeth aren't yellow. These uh, are yellow. They're yeah. like they're like corn kernel yellow. I must have been towards the end. I didn't see a picture of yeah, like that. Man. Maybe he was a smoker. And he smoked cigars in the, a lot of the movies. And then there seemed to be a James Bond run. It was Chris Cornell. Right. With the Suicide by Hanging. Right. Who sang the uh, title theme to Casino Royale. Oh, okay. And then there was the girl you sent over who... Apparently, just massage <laughs> Sean Connery in Thunderball. <laughs> she was the masseuse girl. Yeah, I can't remember her name. And she had very few other parts. Although, she did have a lot of parts on display. Oh, okay. Apparently, she was a centerfold model also. Mm. And Playboy, and I saw some lovely uh, 1960s. Didn't the Dina Merrill die? Dina Merrill, who was, I wouldn't have included, except she was Calamity Jane on the Batman mm -hmm. series with her husband, I found out. Oh, really? Who, what was, who was uh, Shame on the Batman? Cliff Robertson. Cliff Robertson, yeah. So she died, and who else? Wasn't there a Verdugo? Oh, it was the girl who was uh, the nurse on Marcus Welby, one of the first Spanish professionals, <laughs> because she was a nurse. But she, she, the claim to fame for us is she was Esmeralda in the House of Frankenstein. Oh, there you go. And geez, that was a. I can't remember who else. Oh, Powers Booth. Power. Oh, Powers Booth, fine actor. Just saw him uh, in uh, as I was watching some of the Hatfield and McCoys with Kevin Costner and Bill Dead Paxton. <laughs> oh no. Uh, that was a great series. Very good series. We'll have all these uh, when I reboot my computer. We'll do these all again quickly uh, with the additions that are, I'm sure are coming. Okay. <laughs> I guess they always, there's always somebody. They were coming fast and furious and all Bond related for a mm. week there. Game time. I have to go over here. You have to go over there. The producer's uh, in the, sleep. The, the <laughs> Twilight Zone. He was up late at the casino oh. watching the uh, WWF or W or whatever they're calling winning it. money and making sure he wasn't getting rolled in the parking lot. All right, it's Post a Pairs Game where you've sent in two numbers via email from one to six. We select your entry, reveal what's behind the numbers you give us. If they match, you win two free movie passes. If they don't match, you don't win nothing. And if you're right spin the wheel, you can win up to ten tickets. Let's go over to the board. Here's the board. And watch carefully yeah. down by the desk. Here comes some entries. Woo! Look at that. Ed's oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna shake him up there, Ed. Shake it up. I think what we're gonna do uh, starting in September is bring down former co-hosts, people that appeared on the show one time, to do what I'm doing here. Okay. And to a uh, guest. Sure. Man, I don't have to. Show you didn't up. bring anybody uh, other than Laura Excitement. Laura Excitement. <laughs> Didn't I bring in? Did, no, I didn't bring anyone else on. No Did one else would do it. I brought some down, but they wouldn't. They still wouldn't be on the air. They wouldn't be on the air. Oh, huh. I'm looking at you, Eileen. Oh, Eileen. Anybody that worked at Pier One with us that oh, would like to I, come Eileen down? Eileen was just. Uh, oh. hmm. Eileen, and we had Alicia. Alicia, but Eileen. Which, Alicia. That Alicia reminds dance. me. I've been doing the research on the butt song. Uh -huh. Which was basically the Alicia dance where right. she would do this. She was twerking before it was, before it became time popular. 
But Eileen, oh, she was lovely. I love. Uh, oh. Lawrence Katz, two and six. Didn't um, <laughs> I remember there was a New Year's party? Yes, there was. I was at, and you were at, yes. and Eileen and. Yes. Didn't uh, Alicia come out and yes. say, Dave? What did she say? Dave? I saw. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean. She said, Eileen, why is your bra over here? <laughs> <laughs> because I took it <laughs> off of her. That's why. <laughs> anyway, Lawrence Katz, two and six. Two and six. And spin the wheel. And we already did the set. <laughs> we did. I thought we'd do it again. Okay. Two and six. Two That's and six. That's got a good one here. Oh, man. Oh. There you go. That reminds me, the first thing I do when I get that computer booted up, hopefully, is to put a copy of that web series up on YouTube <laughs> in the hidden panel. Uh, is it done? <laughs> uh, has everything been filmed? <laughs> Everything's been filmed. Why is this thing taking 20 years? <laughs> I'll show you. Uh, the first episode is a doozy. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> anyway. Why? We'll talk about it after we give away the address here. If you want to enter and lose like Lawrence, then <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> send your email to MediaZone95. At G hey, Kong. Come on, Kong. What's going on? There you go. MediaZone95 yeah. at gmail.com. Second one. MediaZone95 at gmail.com. Send in your... Two numbers from one to six. If we select your entry and reveal what's behind the two numbers that you're giving us, if they match you in two free movie passes, and if you're right, spin the wheel, you have one chance to turn those two tickets into ten, two chances for six, two chances for four, six chances you keep the two, five chances you lose one, and two chances you give them both back to us. There you go. So anyway, what were we saying? Oh, the, the, the web, web series. series. What's the deal? Eh? Here's the thing with uh, when you say, oh, let's just do it on the green screen. <laughs> That's the problem with the first episode. Okay. We should have took a few. Uh, God knows the producer has 100 lights sitting around. We should have built uh, a strip club upstairs. Oh, okay. Or a facsimile. Instead of putting the... <laughs> a what? A facsimile. <laughs> a facsimile. <laughs> Instead of putting the green screen up. Oh, we'll just do it in the post-production. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, the pro post-production is me, and I got to uh, <laughs> twerk and tweak all these, uh, <laughs> all these shots so they look decent. Which they do, and they're getting almost there. So is it an episode... <laughs> Worthy of being shown to the public, or is it like <laughs> kind of like, well, I'll just show it to like, you know, my grandparents who no, got it's, dementia? No, it's actually and... pretty entertaining. What, well, that was the, the whole purpose of this web series. It'll, there's been some, we won't mention, there's been some other web series where they would do a, an entire take for a minute. I wanted to have a lot of, a little bit of comedy, some monsters, a few boobs. <laughs> we'll throw boobs. We got boobs? We got boobs. We got girls. boobs? See, you weren't there for all the filming. Wait a minute, we got real boobs? There's some real boobs coming Someone out. showed their boobs? Oh, not nude boobs. Oh, I want uh, nude boobs. <laughs> when I hear boobs, I'm thinking <laughs> boobs. <laughs> I don't get many boobs at my advanced age. I need to see as many boobs as possible. Oh, wait a minute, I got the internet. <laughs> Well, there's you porn for that. You yeah. see all the boobs. You so want. you got boobs like you mean like cleavage boobs. Well, we just have some nice cleavage and oh. nice. Uh, well, that's lilac, isn't it? Lilac, and we have Cami. Mm -hmm. Lilac's very lovely. Lilac is all. We have the sexy vampire with the cleavage. Mm -hmm. Then we have the victim with the cleavage. Oh, a lot all of right. cleavage, and maybe we'll do a special edition in the seventh episode, <laughs> which will be filmed. I was thinking maybe we could film another. We'll see. We'll finish this up on next week. Remember what we're saying there. The Media Zone has been a Cable 2000 production.